Hey everyone, welcome back to Garden State Grown. I'm not going to have that much to tell you today except for the fact that I was, uh, after a long hard day at work, I was on my way home and I got uh, like pit maneuvered by a big Ford 250 and they slammed me into that divider that goes between the highway and the exit lane. I was trying to exit and they hit me. And instead of me exiting, I turned sideways. I hit the uh, divider thing and then the truck couldn't stop. So it just continued to slam me in my passenger side and crush me up. And, uh... I'm okay. I'm fine. It's no, you know, I mean, thank God I came out of it alive. The, uh, you know, airbags went off, but, mm, you know, it's all right. Still alive. I didn't check on my garden today. I gave it a day off. I'm actually taking a day off of work tomorrow. I called in and I said, here's a picture of my car. <laughs> I'm not coming to work tomorrow. And they were like, yeah, feel better, bro. I do feel better. It's okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just, I'm just going to lay on the couch for today. I'm going to take a lazy day. I'm not going to work in a garden. I'm not going to do anything. So, uh, have a great night. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and you know, all that stupid shit. Hey everyone, welcome back to Garden State Growing. Today I'm going to be putting my artichokes into the ground. Now artichokes are an amazing vegetable. They are there in my top of vegetables, right probably behind uh, asparagus, which is my absolute favorite vegetable. So let me show you how I'm going to put these in the ground. All right, so first of all, I'm doing something a little different with this bed than I normally do. Um, Normally, I just follow a hugel culture method of putting wood chips and uh, and logs and bark and sticks in the bottom. Okay, on Mother's Day, I cooked uh, a bunch of different meals for all my friends at work, and this is the leftover scraps. So I decided I'm going to throw them into this bed. Let me get this bed prepared for these artichokes. Okay, one last thing that I didn't mention that I'm going to throw in there is I have all of these yes these were tomato plants that either cracked um uh, split in half or got damaged in some way and so they're not really worth it for me to grow them uh there's some of these that i could whack and i could try to grow if i just want to stick it in the ground and produce roots and get something off of these plants this year but it's not really worth it to me since i have so many tomato plants already planted and so many still in the greenhouse and hardening off up on my deck. So I'm just gonna take these and I'm gonna throw them down in the bottom. That's gonna add to nitrogen with the artichokes. And I'll explain the importance of nitrogen a little later on in the video. bed has been amended and filled if you want to know what I put in it you can watch the raised garden bed video that I put up it's basically all the same thing I will put a list up on the video for you just out of curiosity but I'm not gonna waste your time explaining it all now artichokes are uh, one of one of my favorite uh, vegetables to eat uh, there's a lot of different ways you can prepare it I'll talk a little bit about that later on 
but I just want to show you the artichokes. I have some that are doing extremely well and some that are not. And they were right next to each other in the greenhouse. Why one grew better than the other, I'm not exactly sure. I, I have a suspicion that it was uh, sunlight availability. Uh, a lot of the bigger ones had crowded out some of the smaller uh, artichoke plants. Now, uh, artichokes are perennials. They do come back year after year if they're treated right, okay? Uh, Artichokes can be grown in climate zones all the way up to zone 5. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend growing it anywhere above or below zone 5. So that would be like zone 4, which would be way north. Or a Mediterranean vegetable. They're not really grown commercially that much in the United States. There is a certain pocket in California that grows artichokes. But for the most part... Uh, artichokes are grown in Europe and Italy um, and around that surrounding Mediterranean area, the Mondavi coast. Uh, and then they're shipped to the United States. So about time we get them here in the United States, they are a couple months older and uh, not as fresh. There's nothing like getting a fresh artichoke from your garden. So they are perennials, but here I am in zone 7A. And uh, in order for me to uh, have artichokes, I'm going to have to mulch this. I'm going to have to mulch my artichokes uh, very heavily when it comes to fall and the winter. I did grow artichokes last year. I did not mulch them enough. I did not put a tarp over top to protect them. And I wind up losing them over the winter. Unfortunately, I will not see artichokes this year from those plants. They are pretty much dead and gone. So I'm going to start over with these artichokes. And I'm going to leave the soil level in the raised bed at least six inches low. Because I want to, after I plant them, I'm going to bring in about six inches of mulch. And then when fall and winter comes, I'm going to cut these artichokes back. I'm going to cut them down and I'm going to mulch on top like an additional six inches to eight inches of mulch on top and then take some plastic or a tarp and I'm going to cover it to try to protect it for the winter. Now artichokes take a very, very, very long time to mature. They could take up to 180 days. That's six months. Do you have a growing season long enough to grow artichokes? In 7A, I barely do. If I get them in the ground right now, I may see some small artichokes by the end of this year um, going into fall. But like I said, when I cut them down and mulch them over, I should definitely see artichokes next year. Artichokes can last up to five years. Now, if you live in zones like eight or higher, eight, nine, 10, 11, there's a good chance that they will be protected enough over winter. Uh, depending on where you live in the United States, you may have to uh, cover them up. They are cold tolerant to about, they say negative five degrees. I don't necessarily believe that. I had no negative degree weather last year in New Jersey, and I lost all the artichokes that I did. Again, I didn't mulch them correctly. Artichokes are one of the easiest plants to grow. Literally, you just dig a hole, basically stick it in the ground. But the problem is, is they're not the easiest vegetable to, or, and, do I dare even say vegetable? The reality is, is the part of the artichoke we eat is a flower, or actually it's an immature flower that we're eating. Um, and it is a little bit more difficult to grow that flower. Now there's a couple little tips or tricks that you can do to try to ensure that you're gonna get a good flower on it. When it comes to uh, fertilizing an artichoke, uh, it's very simple. You wanna use a, a nice balanced nutrition. You wanna have phosphorus and you wanna have potassium in it, but you do wanna concentrate on nitrogen, especially in the spring. Nitrogen is what's going to make these leaves grow nice, tall, and healthy, okay? And also get ready to produce those flowers. Now, when fall comes, uh, and the summer is over and we're not in so much heat, you can um, concentrate more on phosphorus that is going to uh, 
uh, put more nutrients into the roots and the base of this plant. These roots have the ability to spread deep and wide and establish themselves good. So in the fall, phosphorus, in the spring, nitrogen. So I'm going to, today I'm gonna to concentrate more on nitrogen. I do have the miracle Grow Performance Organics, which is the high in nitrogen base. It's nine to seven, which is fine, exactly for what I need to. It has potassium. It has, it's low in phosphorus and it's high in nitrogen. This is what's going to give me that nice, full, lush bush to pruning your artichoke plants. There are two very uh, controversial mythologies to pruning your plants. There are gardeners out there that suggest that if you get 10 uh, artichokes on a plant, you should cut out at least five of them and only let five grow. And this way, instead of having 10 really small artichokes, you have uh, five larger artichokes. But they also mentioned that they don't eat the leaves of the artichokes, they only eat the hearts of the artichoke, and they want a large heart to eat. Well, that's fine if you want to do that. I personally, one of my favorite ways to make artichoke is to either steam it or boil it. Okay, and when I boil it, I boil it with either a little bit of celery salt in the water or some chicken broth sprinkled over top to give it a nice um, salty, uh, brothy flavor to the artichoke. I eat the leaves. I, I grew up eating leaves of the artichoke. Uh, and I don't mean the leaves of the plant. I'm talking about the petals of the flower. Uh, you know, you boil it until they're tender and soft, mix it with a little bit of oil and vinegar, dip it and scrape the flesh off with your teeth and it's absolutely delicious. But then there's also stuffing your artichoke and I like to stuff my artichoke two different ways. I will do uh, a seafood blend with some crab and some uh, clam and some shrimp uh, minced up and blended with some uh, breadcrumbs and stuffed into an already steamed artichoke that has been cut down. I will show you that at the end of the year if I do get artichokes to do that. Uh, and there's also a meat version where you could do either sausage or ground beef mixed in with breadcrumbs again and seasoned and stuffed into the petals. And you could always do, like I said, a vegetarian style artichoke. The artichoke is a Mediterranean of vegetable and or flower plant, whatever you want to call it. And as, as far as watering goes, they don't need a lot of water. If you saw in the hyperlapse, I did pre-water my bed and that's all I'm going to do. I really, I soaked it down really good. I let all the amendments blend in. I raked it out a little bit and then I soaked it down a little bit again and I let it sit for like 15 or 20 minutes to let all that moisture incorporate in the soil. And that's about all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna come around weekly or bi-weekly and uh, water these artichokes. They're used to growing in sandy soil, um, nice loose soil. That's why I added the vermiculite and the perlite. And, uh, and they, they are very drought tolerant. The artichoke is an easy plant to grow, but not such an easy plant to flower. There are three considerations I want to take if my plant is not flowering. Uh, one is fertilization. Did I add enough uh, nitrogen in the soil when I first planted them? Uh, and as far as nitrogen goes, I want to go 10 plus. I really want to go heavy on the nitrogen. Uh, even if maybe a water soluble uh, nitrogen uh, source like calcium nitrate up to 15 or 15.5 and that's great. The second consideration is sun. Do you get enough sun in the area that you're growing your artichokes? Uh, they need at least six to eight hours of direct sunlight in order to uh, produce flowers. If you don't get that, net, if you put it in a spot that only gets four or less hours of sunlight, you're not going to see flowers. The other one is pH. It shows like a pH of around 5.5. If they do not have that lower pH soil, they will not be able to uptake the nutrients that you're giving it. So then what you fertilize it with isn't going to matter anyway. So you can easily uh, drop your pH in your soil. Now I know my mushroom compost is around basically seven. It's neutral. I drop that down. I use a little bit of a garden soil acidifier 
I read the directions and I applied it appropriately. Plus I'm gonna top dress with a little bit more of it. Also, I'm thinking about growing some leeks in this bed because I do have some extra room and leeks fare very well with additional sulfur and acidity to the soil. So let's go back and let's do a rundown of artichokes. They're easy to grow, hard to flower. Three things you need to take in consideration if you're not getting flowers are the amount of sun you're giving, the amount of fertilizer and what type of fertilizer, heavy on nitrogen in spring, heavy on phosphorus in fall, and the pH of the soil. And you don't really have to worry that much about watering. It is the mindset of if you get 10 artichokes, cut off five. But I've also been in contact with a lot of other gardeners that are experienced artichoke growers. And they're saying, what are you doing that's completely insane? My artichoke plants get about 20 to 25 artichokes per plant. I do not cut any of them down and they're a beautiful size. I've seen their artichoke plants and they are absolutely magnificent. So instead of cutting off five to 10, they told me if I'm only getting you know, 10 artichokes on a plant, I'm doing something wrong. So they're the ones who gave me the tips on how to be, uh, how to have a productive artichoke plant. And I'm gonna go for the plants that have 20 artichokes on them because if they're small, I don't mind that. I can make personal sized little stuffed artichokes or I can boil or steam the smaller artichokes and have them, you know, scrape them off just like I like, okay? So I am not gonna prune these down after they start flowering. But what I am gonna do is I am gonna prune these a little bit as I plant them. Now, as you can see with this plant, I have two broken, stems so they're gonna come off and I have some wilted leaves this stem is broken so that's gonna come off this plants going to survive just fine that was a little broken too I'm gonna wind up taking that one off all right, so I just turned this big, tall, beautiful artichoke, artichoke plant into a small artichoke plant, and it is going to go into the ground. I'm gonna get these into the ground. I'm not even gonna show you how I plant them. It's very simple. Dig a hole, put them in there. Don't cover the leaves. Other than that, not much. I'll bring you back to show you the spacing. All right, so I got them in the ground. It took me a whole five seconds to get them buried. Uh, I have this one leaf here that is not doing good. I'm gonna take that off. I have the smaller leaves, which are where the cotyledons for the plant, that's gone. Again, one here, I have a leaf that's not doing that well. I'm gonna take that. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so I have some here. They're a little sloppy. <laughs> uh, they're not as robust as I would love to see. I, I did prune that one back already again. I just removed any leaves that were not doing real well. Um, and I did add my mycos to it. Uh, this is just mushroom mycelium that's going to help regenerate the soil. Uh, the only thing that's left to do right now is mulch it in. Okay guys, so that's it for the artichokes. I got them in the ground and like I said, I'm a big proponent of mulching. The mulching is gonna help weed prevention, it's gonna help moisture retention. Uh, it's also going to protect it from any drastic uh, cold or hot uh, swings in the temperature. And uh, another thing that mulch is gonna do is actually gonna help these leaves from touching the soil. The soil is where the microbes uh, that you will get diseases, uh, blight, and stuff like that. Uh, so the mulch is going to help the leaves stay off the soil and hopefully not get any diseases. As you can see, I planted six plants. And I put two in the back, one in the front, one in the front, 
two in the back. I decided to take my larger plants and put them in the back. I don't want them crowding out any sunshine. Uh, as far as spacing goes with artichokes, I would give them roughly a foot and a half uh, spacing. They are going to grow big. And if what I'm trying to do this year works out, these are going to get very, very big. And hopefully get somewhere around 20 artichokes per plant probably only 15 10 to 15 artichokes per plant we'll see how well i do this year with them so that's it for this episode of garden state growing again my name is eric if you enjoyed this video if you want to try artichokes please there is nothing better than a fresh artichoke that has been cut right off of your plant compared to one that has been shipped from over in Europe and taken months to get here. Not only that, but at the end of the season, I'm not going to cut all the flowers off and eat them. I'm going to leave some of these flowers on the plant because they are some of the most ornamental beautiful flowers you will ever see they are gorgeous and i plan on having them the bumblebees love them the the butterflies love them they're going to help to pollinate all the other plants that i have in the yard and it's going to be wonderful so if you liked this video if you enjoyed watching this video if i did a little bit better of a job of editing and, and scripting this video so it doesn't have to last a half hour long hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that post notification bell and share this video with all your friends and your family uh, that might be into gardening i love you let's move on to another vegetable today